At the highest level of Valorant, the margins are very, very close. The step up to the moment, dash to avoid, oh. and shots are fired! Kang Kang! He's monstrous when he gets going! And he does it! Oh my second! And so you would think that finding any possible edge or advantage that you can would be the highest of priority for all of these teams. And yet there is a strategy that is known to exist and has proven success at this point, and yet barely anyone does it. And so what is it? And why doesn't everyone do it? So within the game of Valorant, there are many different factors that go into winning or losing a game. But actually, the thing that we're talking about today doesn't actually happen in game at all. Because today, we're talking about the map veto. Now, the map veto is a process which happens before the game starts, which is how the maps get chosen that the teams are going to play on. It works pretty simply to start off with. There's a team A and a team B. Team A will ban a map and then Team B will ban a map and then Team A will pick a map and then Team B will pick a map. You then go back and forth banning a map again until you're left with just one of the seven maps as the decider and this is how your standard best of three in Valorant works. But the thing is when it comes to picking and banning maps, most teams in Valorant's history have a set strategy of what they want to do. Of course, when looking at a map veto, they're going to go through all of the maps and, you know, have the maps that they like and have the maps that they don't like as much. And generally across the board for most teams in Valorant's history, there's going to be one map that they're just like, we don't like it. We don't want to play it. And that could be because when they've scrimmed it, it hasn't gone well, or maybe they played an official and it went horribly, or they just don't have the right answers for the map they don't feel like the map suits their team and so what they will do is have a permaban and a permaban is a map where in those first choices of your first ban you will always ban the same map no matter what you are banning that map you probably don't even practice the map whatsoever you don't know what team comp you would play because you're simply never going to play it because you're always going to ban it first and this has been the general way that most Valorant teams have worked for really most of Valorant's history. And it's not like this cannot find success either. If we take Fnatic as a prime example from 2023, in the 2023 VCT season, in every single game that Fnatic played, they first banned Pearl. Every single game. And they won two tournaments that season and were a wildly successful team. So it's not like having a permaban is a bad idea and an idea that cannot work. However, there are a couple of teams throughout Valorant's short history that have gone with a bit of a different approach. And that is to play all seven maps. Now that again might sound stupid to just play all of the maps that are in the map pool. It seems so obvious easy yeah why wouldn't you do that but again having a permaban is going to help a lot of teams right one it simplifies your map veto you know what you're always banning and whatnot but also it means that your practice time you don't have to come up with all the ideas and comps and strategy for a certain map you know that you're not going to play it ever so you can just discard it to the side and focus and get good at those other six maps like Fnatic did in 2023 Having a 7 map pool means that you need to spend all of that extra time working on that 7th map, having the protocols, having the strategy, the ideas, the team play, all of that work, and that takes a lot of time. And throughout Valorant's history, only a couple teams have really tried this, to go for a full 7 map pool, but they have found some pretty good results. The most recent example of one of these teams was Gen G, who for the first half of the season the map pool was Ascent, Breeze, Bind, Icebox, Lotus, Split, and Sunset, and Genji were willing to play all seven of those maps, and did play multiple games on those seven maps. And sure, on some of those maps, perhaps most notably Sunset, but also at times on a map like Icebox, Genji struggled, and they didn't look that great, right? And it looked like that having the seven maps perhaps cost them some of these times because they weren't able to refine some of these maps enough and sometimes they struggled on those maps. But the main crucial advantage that you get by having a full seven map pool is that you can own the map veto. And what do I mean by owning the map veto? Well, let's take an example from Fnatic. If Fnatic are playing in a game and we know that they're banning Pearl, no matter what, they definitely will ban Pearl because they did in every other single game in the season. 
Well, what happens if Fnatic are playing against a team who also wants to ban Pearl? Well, then Fnatic are basically just wasting their ban, right? And their opponents at that point essentially have a free map ban. And that's the thing, by having a perma ban, it locks Fnatic into, well, they have to ban Pearl. So if you're the opponent, you can know that. And also it gives you the chance to prepare for that. The potential map pool against Fnatic is gonna be very, very obvious as to where it's gonna go. You know that they're gonna ban Pearl. You know whatever you're gonna ban as well. So you know the five maps that are then in play to potentially get picked. And you also will definitely know whatever you want to pick will get played. That of course means as well that you have a lot of time to prepare for what you want to do against a Fnatic, right? And again, for the regular seasons in VCT, there is a week between games. So you have a full week knowing full well the map that you definitely will be playing on. But of course, if you have a full seven map pool like Gen G did in 2024, it's difficult to prepare for that because you don't really know what they're going to ban. And that can be tough to prepare for because now the different ways that the map veto could go are in a lot of different directions basically depending on what gen g want to do you don't know what they're going to pick you don't know what they're going to ban and so what do you prepare for and the thing is as well it's interesting how both the fanatic and the gen g seasons ended up playing out because in fanatic's 2024 run particularly the first half of the season up to winning masters tokyo fanatic dominated a lot of those games they were simply way better than everyone else in that season. They basically barely dropped a map for most of the season. In fact, winning a map against Fnatic was seen as pretty impressive in that first part of the season. And so honestly for them, probably having a permaban didn't really matter because even if you could prepare, they were probably just gonna be better than you anyway on all of the five maps that were gonna be end up potentially playing. But now that the gap is certainly closed up and there isn't one team that's clearly way better than everyone else, using Gen G's seven map pool strategy really, really helped them because they didn't win every game 2-0 and cleanly. They won a lot of 2-1s throughout the season. There was a lot of close games that they played, both grand finals that they played in in 2024, went the full distance to map five. And this again is where the seven map pool can really help you because if you just play through it logically as well, you're gonna end up with better decider maps. When you go to map three, if you have banned your opponent's best map, and then let's say that they pick their second best map, but then if you ban the second time their third best map, you know that the decider is max gonna be fourth on your opponent's list. It's not probably gonna be a map that they're feeling great about. And then depending on how the rest of the veto's gone, it could end up with being a map that they really don't like that much, right? Their fifth, sixth best map is the map that you're then playing to decide the game. And so Gen G won a lot of these games like that, right? Yes, they were a very good team, but they weren't amazing at every single map that they played. Their sunset in particular was pretty sketchy throughout most of the season, but they were willing to play it and they would win sometimes because they're a good team, but against teams who knew what they were doing on sunset, they wouldn't win. And that's the thing, it feels like a risk, like, oh, do we really want to play this sunset map that we're not that great at if you're Gen G? Well, yeah, because you're still a good team and you still might be able to win that map. And the thing is, it's not like every opponent is going to pick sunset against you, right? If that was the one big weakness maybe in Gen G's map pool this season, it's not like everyone was going, well, we must pick Sunset, because guess what? You're going to run into teams who also aren't that good at Sunset, right? Sometimes team was even banned Sunset against Genji because it's their permaban. And at that point, Genji are just laughing because the rest of their map pool is pretty good. And now they basically have a free path to victory. And in fact, we can see a pretty good example of this in Genji's game against 100 Thieves, because during the midpoint of the season towards qualifying for Master Shanghai, 100 Thieves were really, really good at bind. And so when they played in their games here, 100 Thieves, they would come in and we could take a look at their results here. They win bind against Genji. They win bind against Cloud9. They don't play it here against Crew. They actually lose the game, right? They win bind against NRG. They win bind against Loud there. They win bind against Leviathan. They did have one slip up here against G2 on bind, but then they managed to win the very next game against G2 on bind. They come into Master Shanghai they beat foot on bind they play gen g and gen g banned bind against 100 thieves and cruise to a 2-0 victory and this is the thing 100 thieves throughout that course of the season were really really good at bind and therefore they picked bind every single time that the opponent didn't straight ban it against them and guess what 
they won pretty much every time. They were starting all of those games practically 1-0 up. But that's the thing. These teams have these permabans, and so it locks them into not banning bind if that's not their permaban and that one example against crew it just so happened to be crew's permaban so 100 thieves had a bad matchup against them and lost and then they come into gen g who are free to pick what they want to ban they ban bind and they win but the thing is you might be saying well tmv this is from 2024 so maybe next season a lot of teams will go for a seven map pool like gen g did learning from the success of gen g the thing is, there is another older example of a team doing this and finding a lot of success. And that team is FPX, because if you look at FPX Masters Copenhagen run and what they were first banning, they went through banning, for instance, Icebox in their first game. Then they banned Bind for a couple of games. Then they banned Haven. Then they would go to DRX and ban Breeze. Then they would play Fnatic and ban Icebox. Then they would play Optic and ban Breeze again. And then eventually in the grand final, they didn't have a map ban because they came from the lowers. But again, the fact that they were able to play all seven maps in a full best of five, it probably helped them eventually close out that series because from Paper X perspective, there wasn't like an easy map of, oh, FPX don't play this map, so this one is an easy win. That map didn't exist and FPX ended up winning it 3-2. And so the map veto to me is probably one of the most important aspects of Valorant that maybe doesn't get talked about as much. And tomorrow I'll actually be doing another video about map vetoing and kind of how bad some teams are at map vetoing. So if you want to see me get a bit angry, check out tomorrow's video as well. But it'll be interesting to see if next season other teams do adopt it because again, at the top right now, it's pretty close between quite a few teams. And so getting any significant edge that you potentially can should be a high priority. So we'll see if more teams go for the seven map pool.